Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this time I've got an Argonian uh, Warden tank for you guys. And um, I'll get into the race right away first thing because I usually always say that Nord is the best tanking race followed by Imperial. But I know a lot of people have Warden tanks that are Argonians. You see them pretty much everywhere in Craglorn. And uh, yeah, the reason why this guy is an Argonian is actually because this is my support character. I only have space for one Warden support character. So this guy, as you can see, has got the fully resto stuff, skill and leveled as well. And because Argonian is the one race that you can perfectly heal and tank on, I decided to leave this guy an Argonian and not swap the race to Nord for this video. I made sure that we pretty much hit resistance caps and got very nice overall stats, so we'll be totally fine being an Argonian. Plus, the extra heals are perfect as well. So let's quickly look at the race, since we're already in here. Obviously, uh, you gain more experience on rest of stuff, and your swimming speed is increased. That doesn't really make any difference for tanking. Your healing done is increased by 6%, though, which is nice. And I've set this build up to be more of a sort of dungeon tank off tank, though you can perfectly do with this in trials as well. Um, I'll explain later on then what you're going to have to switch out if you want to main tank the trials. It's not too much, really. Uh, Argonian resistance, you got disease resistance, gain uh, immunity to the diseased status effect. And then um, your max health is increased by 1%. That is really the only buff that would come in handy for the tanking as well. And then your max magicka is also increased by 1,000. And when you drink a potion, you restore 4,000 health, magicka, and stamina. So resourceful is kind of nice if you want to play around with it. I did in this build, as you'll see, we'll have a potion reduction cooldown glyph on one of our jewelry pieces as well to make use of the whole Argonian thing a little bit more. And then the max magicka is increased as well, obviously. So um, let's get into the stats. We'll quickly buff up here. As you can see, when we're fully buffed up, We've got over 40k health, a nice Magicka pool of 19k, a bigger stamina pool of 20k. Magicka recovery is over 1600, so that is fine as well. And our resistances are about 28k spell resistance and 27k physical resistance. So as long as you keep all of your buffs up, you are perfectly fine, perfectly tanky. We did achieve that, or I did achieve that, with uh, putting 50 points into health and 14 into stamina. Now... You'll be wondering why I didn't put any into Magicka and the Magicka pool is still like 19k. That has to do with the Argonian passive of getting an extra k Magicka and then with one of the sets we're wearing which gives us an extra 2k Magicka. So if you decide to swap out one of the sets or like the main front bar or back bar set, you might have to put a little more points into here. But I had to put 14 into stamina to make sure that our stamina pool is bigger than our Magicka pool so that is the main resource we get back when we take a synergy. So with this setup that the, the build is working with the, uh, with the sets I'm wearing, you definitely want to make sure that your uh, stamina pool is higher than your magic pool. So that's what you get back when you take a synergy. For food, we're running the Bewitched Sugar Skulls, which give us a nice boost of everything. Max health, max stamina, and magicka, and an extra increased health recovery, which is always nice as a tank as well. And then we're running the Atronach, increasing our magicka recovery by 310 for a Mundustone. For potions, since you get everything with a uh, with a Argonian, you can either just use the Crown Tri potions. I'm using the Essence of Health potions here because they give more health, Magicka, and Stamina and boost all three uh, stats in terms of recovery. So that is definitely advisable on a tank. But if you're a bit short on cash or gold, you can also just run any kind of trash pod because you will get... Um, you will get all three resources back anyway. However, the safer choice is definitely the Essence of Health, just because you also get increased recovery for each three of your stats. Okay, now let's get into the skills. First up, as a damage shield, as usual, defensive stance. Um, this basically is just a damage shield that absorbs uh, up to 11k damage for six seconds. It's uh, quite nice. Also, the next harmful direct damage projectile cast at you uh, will be reflected and the reason why I tend to use this shield over any other 
is basically the last bit here. While you have a shield equipped, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%. So having this skill on your front bar just makes it easier to sustain the tanking. In case uh, you want another shield, there are two more that you could use. One is the Shimmering Shield here from the Winter's Embrace skill line. This is pretty much also a shield that absorbs up to 60k damage from three projectiles. It's only for projectiles though. However, if you do absorb one, you gain major heroism for six seconds, granting you three ultimate. So for ultimate uh, building, this is very nice as well. And then the other one you have is the Bone Shield in the Undaunted skill line. Pretty much absorbs the same damage, also around 11k for six seconds. And the nice thing about this is an ally, acti an ally near you can activate the Bone Wall Synergy. So there's an extra synergy that you can give your team. Uh, in the end, it's up to you which one you want to use. However, for standard content, I just prefer defensive stance because of the increased amount of damage we can block and the blocking cost reduction. Next up is our heal, and this comes from the Winter's Embrace skill line. This is Polar Wind. I've just recently changed the morph to Polar Wind for this build because what this does is you instantly heal for over 11k and then an additional 1400 uh, health for every one second over five seconds and the wind can also sweep out in search of an ally within 12 meters of you healing them for 11k as well so you'll realize pretty soon that with this build i went for a bit of a healing tank that is also providing a lot of healing for the group and uh polar wind is definitely the nicer more for that the other one would do damage frost damage uh, which this one does as well, but the other one has a sort of a stronger frost damage thing going on. However, this is just nice for four-man content, especially if you don't run with a healer, but with three DPS, because it doesn't only heal you, it's not very, very strong heal on yourself, but it's also a very strong heal on one of your allies within 12 meters of you. Next up is Sanguine Altar. This comes from the Undaunted skill line. What this does is it sacrifices your own life so it costs health uh, but it will apply minor lifesteal to all the enemies in the area healing you and the allies for about 800 health every one second when damaging them so as long as your allies do damage to the enemies they will heal themselves by doing so plus they can also activate the blood funnel synergy healing themselves for 40 percent of their max health which is also very strong synergy now this is the first option Another option you could use is using a skill from the green balance skill line such as budding seeds or enchanted growth, but this is up to you. Personally, most DPS prefer having the lifesteal there and having the blood funnel synergy to activate. However, there is something nice in the passives of the green balance skill line, uh, which says when you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, you gain major mending, increasing healing done by another 16%. So that would be even stronger heals, and this is also a very nice AoE heal. So there is an option to use one of these skills here if you wanted to. Probably more so Budding Seeds, because Enchanted Growth will only heal things in front of you. But Sanguine Altar is just the standard choice for tanking, so that's probably what you want to run. Alright, next up is our Blue Betty. This calls a Betty Natch to your side, which restores 5k Magicka to you over 25 seconds also gives you major brutality and sorcery which isn't too important for tanking but every five seconds the net also removes one negative effect from you so that is also very nice and then later on when we get into the passives you will see that there is more um more to the blue betty it'll actually give you a lot more passive buffs than just what it says here the morph itself i personally prefer the magicka morph because a lot of the skills we're using cost magicka and uh our stamina pool and our block cost reduction and everything is set up very well so I figured since I don't really need a stamina returning Betty on any of my other tank characters such as my Nightblade tank or my Necromancer tank or my Dragonite tank I will be perfectly fine on a Warden without it as well of course it's nice because you can recover a little bit of stamina even while you're blocking but to me personally and to my playstyle personally, getting Magicka back is nicer because that's what the majority of my skills actually cost. Alright, next up is Pierce Armor. Obviously that's our main taunt. 
comes from the one hand and shield skill line this has been changed so it afflicts the enemy with minor breach and major breach reducing their physical and spell resistance by almost 3k and then almost 6k for 15 seconds which is why a lot of magicka dps heavy groups don't really need sets like alkosh anymore and um obviously it's also your taunt in case you're new to this game i'll quickly show you that You just stab the guy and then it's taunted and you can see the little red flame above his head indicating that it is taunted and will only attack you and you can also see the little shield buff ticking down above the head of the enemy also indicating that it's taunted and then the two buffs next to that or more so the two debuffs next to that obviously are minor breach and major breach um yeah that is as a tank in eso how you can make sure and even optically see that the enemy is indeed taunted to you and won't go uh, run around kill your teammates so this is pretty much the tank's bread and butter this is the skill that you need to be the tank and actually uh, get the taunt on things and then next up is barrier i haven't morphed this on this character yet uh morph it to reviving barrier when you get to that this is pretty much just a huge damage ward that will protect your nearby group members that absorbs up to about 16k damage for 30 seconds. This comes from the PvP skill line. Assault, the uh, support, sorry. And then also what this does is it increases your magicka recovery just for having it slotted. So that is a really, really big damage shield that will protect your group in oh shit moments. Uh, plus also just having it slotted increases your magicka recovery. Now, if you don't have support leveled up to 6 yet, just go for the green balance uh, ultimate enchanted forest. And this will just put a healing forest down that will heal uh, the most injured friendly target for about 5k health. And then the forest also continues to heal you and your allies in the area for almost 2k health every 1 second for 6 seconds. And you generate 20 ultimate if the initial heal is used on a friendly target under 50% health. So if you're using it right, it only costs 90 ultimate, you will be able to really use that forest a whole lot. So much for the healing or safety ultimate. And then on the back bar, we'll have our damage ultimate. Let's go into that right away since we're already talking about ultimates. This comes from the assault skill line. I think it unlocks at rank four or so. Aggressive Warhorn, you sound a Warhorn to rally your forces, increasing you and your uh, group's max magicka and max stamina by 10% for 40 seconds. And more importantly, you and your allies gain major force, increasing their critical damage done by 20% for 10 seconds. So if you time this right, this can be a huge, huge damage boost to your whole group, especially if someone's about to drop a Necromancer Colossus, or if people are have been saving their ultimates for a certain moment in a fight. You can really boost everybody's damage with the Warhorn as well. It's been one of the most used ultimates on tanks for a long time, and still is. Okay. Going on on the back bar, we've got the Blockade of Frost. Slam your, slaf, uh, slam your staff down to create an Ice Barrier in front of you, dealing Frost damage. So this is pretty much just a field that you can put out in front of you. You will give nearby allies the shield that will save them from projectiles. And then everything inside of the Frost Barrier will continuously take Frost damage, uh, chilled enemies can be immobilized with it as well so it's also nice for um for stacking things up or keeping them in place if you don't want them to move towards your group too fast and then the other thing it does uh is of course activate the glyph on our back bar weapon on our on our ice staff which is a, a crusher glyph that will further reduce the enemy's resistances next up is silver leash uh, this one is pretty much a crossbow that will pull enemies towards you. It'll look like this. Just fire the crossbow and then the enemy would be pulled towards you. Obviously I can't pull this thing towards me because it's a target skeleton. But yeah, this is for grouping adds up and keeping them in one place. Comes from the fighter skill skill line. Starts out as silver bolt, morph it to silver leash and then it just uh, reduces their movement speed for four seconds and pulls them towards you. Another skill you could use from the Warden skill line would be Frozen Device. This summons a portal after 1.5 seconds and when triggered the enemy is teleported towards you and immobilized for 3 seconds and also uh, taking frost damage and afflicted with major maim. 
This is also a very nice skill. You would technically just summon the portal and this guy over here, and then after a certain amount of time, it will get pulled towards you if the target skeleton was mobile, obviously. But it is, in my opinion, a little bit harder to use because sometimes they have to be right in the middle of the portal to actually activate the um, activate the teleportation effect that teleports them towards you. However, both skills are nice. If you can handle using Frozen Device, uh, just go for it. It's a very strong skill as well. Personally, I do prefer the leash, but that's up to you. Next up is the um, Expansive Frost Cloak. This is your source of major resolve, increasing your physical and spell resistance by almost 6k for 20 seconds. So that is how we get our resistances up to almost 30k. I think it was around 28k, 27k, but that's good enough for tanking anyway. And uh, the nice thing about this is it will also give that same uh, resistance buff to your group. So everybody around you that gets hit by this ice wave sort of will also get that resistance buff so you can make your group really bulky with it and uh, it'll definitely help them out a lot usually warden healers bring this skill but since I've set this tank up to be a little bit like a solo tank with three DPS groups dungeon kind of thing uh, it's definitely on this build as well it's very very strong skill Next thing we've got from the Winter's Embrace skill line is Gripping Shards. This is there to um, pretty much keep your enemies in place. That is how you can group them up nicely and stack them up. Uh, what it does is it conjures Ice Shards around you, immobilizing the enemies in them for 3 seconds and dealing frost damage. And then enemies hit or overcome with a Bitter Cult, reducing their movement seat by 30% uh, percent for 3 seconds. So this is kind of like the Dragon Knight's Claws for you the skill that you can just use for ad control when there's a bunch of ads rushing towards you you can just slow them down and then the good thing about this is is this deals ice damage and our bl blockade of frost also deals ice damage so if you stack them over each other you go with these shards and then with the blockade of frost chances are everything coming towards you will be chilled and immobilized anyway so um yeah, it's really, really nice uh, combination for, for crowd control. And then last but not least is our Far Taunt. This is again from the Undaunted skill line. This is Inner Rage, starts as Inner Fire, morph it to Inner Rage. And then what it does is it deals magic damage, but it's also taunting an enemy towards you for 15 seconds. And an ally, uh, ranged ally targeting the taunted enemy can activate the Radiate Synergy, dealing more magic damage to them um, over the next three seconds. So this is again like our front bar taunt, the sword step, but this is one that you can use from range, you just go like this, and then as you see again, the red flames above the head are there, and the little shield buff is there as well, so the enemy is taunted and will only uh, attack you. This is very nice for pulling enemies in or getting an early taunt on bosses, in case uh, DPS are a little bit too rushy. And um, yeah, obviously though, what you want to keep in mind is that this gives you the very important debuffs on the enemy so always use this taunt if possible because minor breach and uh, major breach are very very important for the enemy's resistance debuff and then this is your far taunt that you can use to get an early taunt on things or taunt them in once in case you're say tanking the boss here and then there's another enemy coming in from over there this is just your far taunt so you can taunt things in from range as well all right so much for the skills now. Um, let's get straight into the sets. The first thing we're using here is Winter's Respite. Because, I said before, since Argonians do have a buff to healing, and um, this is generally meant to be more of a dungeon tank for three DPS, one tank combinations, this is very nice for tanks as well, because tanks need loads of magicka recovery, which it gives us. It gives us an extra almost 2k or over 2k max magicka and then casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground will create a circle of healing frost for 10 seconds. You and your group members restore almost 3k health every one second while standing inside of the circle and uh, it can occur once every 10 seconds. So you can pretty much have a 100% uptime on this because it lasts for 10 seconds. It gives you almost 3k health back, you and your whole group, every one second. So that's 
about 30k health if people just stay inside of it and then once it runs out after 10 seconds it can like be recast right away so you can have 100 percent uptime on this and we've got loads of skills that proc this uh like our elemental blockade our gripping shards or even our blood altar here so you create this huge circle of healing frost and all your teammates inside of it will get a big big heal over time uh all the time pretty much very strong set so we're using a one-hander on the front bar in defending with a damage shield hardening enchantment uh this is just to give us a little bit of our physical and uh, spell resistance boost on the front bar since we are not a nord and we don't really have any resistance buffs uh anywhere else uh this is the preferred trait if you wanted to you could also go with uh a decisive one-hander that will give you a little bit more ultimate over oh, they charged one if you decided to use another glyph on the front bar however uh i preferred the defending one with the hardening enchantment and then we got the shield in sturdy with a stamina glyph that's very important uh like i said before in the beginning of the video so the stamina pool is actually higher than the magicka pool so that's the main resource we get back when taking a synergy uh sturdy because of the block cost reductions in my opinion the best trait for the shield and then the back bar the frost staff is obviously an infused with the crusher enchantment like always on tanks pretty much just to uh, reduce the target's physical and spell resistance even more than you already do with your pierce armor skill now these for the front bar and then let's quickly look at the jewelry i've got two in healthy with magicka recovery glyphs just to have a nice amount of magicka recovery and health and then i've decided to go with one harmony which increases healing resource restore and damage shield strength of your synergies activate by 16 percent so that is actually a very nice trait to have on one of these pieces and then just because of the argonian thing i decided to put an alchemical acceleration enchantment on it to reduce the cooldown of potions below this items level by five seconds so that won't really do a great deal but since we're already in argonian and our potions restore all of our resources it's nice to play with that a little bit and get a little bit of extra here uh so that our potions will be ready sooner rather than later it is a nice means to sustain you probably don't desperately need it but um since we are an argonian why not go with it anyway right as you can see, we've got a nice amount of Magicka recovery. We've got our Betty Netch that restores Magicka. And our health pool is over 40k, which is huge anyway. So I didn't really see the point in putting another healthy one on there with Magicka recovery. So this is a nice little extra that we get from this. Okay, second set is obviously the Yolna Krins. There's hardly any way to get around with this. The whole tank sort of has been built around uh, debuffing the enemy and uh, healing the group in terms of skills and the winter's respite set so this is where our actual damage boost for the group comes in this gives us 1k health uh we gain minor Aegis at all times reducing our damage taken from dungeon trial and arena monsters we get a nice stamina buff which works nicely because this one gives us two magicka buffs and then also when we taunt an enemy we give ourselves and 11 group members so the whole raid team pretty much minor courage for 15 seconds increasing their weapon and spell damage by 215 this can occur every eight seconds so this will pretty much constantly occur because you are the tank you are the one that's taunting things so this is where you give your group the damage boost and then for the monster set um i decided to go with earth core just because of the whole uh healing tank thing that i got going with this build but to be fairly honest with you monster sets for tanks there's nothing really op out there so earth core is actually used quite a lot in things like veteran asylum sanctorium or so um and also this adds a nice four percent healing done bonus but to be fairly honest with you you don't have to run earth core on this um you can use any set you like if you want a bit more resource gain even though you shouldn't need it you can use engine guardian if you want a bit more group heals not just a big as one person heal like this you could use bot gun night flame or if you wanted a bit more sustain for your group you could use uh, symphony of blades so there are loads of sets that are good for tanks but none of them is overly op so that you could say that this really makes a difference 
So the monster set is pretty much just a nice bonus at the moment on most tanks. Uh, and yeah, I decided to go with this because it's a really nice oh shit heal in case one of your group members is about to die. And you can't really reach him with the barrier or your healing forest at the at the time. Uh, yeah. Plus it's also really nice for you in case you get in trouble. Um, so yeah. Now, uh, we're running 5-1-1. So um, the shoulders here are in medium. And then the head is in light. And then all the body pieces of Yolnakrins are obviously in heavy. Now, usually on my tanks I like infused big pieces with tristat glyphs but it turned out that with the nice magicka bonuses from uh, Winter's Respite and the stamina bonus from Yolnakrin plus our 15 points that we got into uh, or 14 points that was that we got into stamina in our character sheet uh, it wasn't actually necessary so instead I preferred to leave two of the big pieces in reinforced with just random health glyphs still uh, works out fine gives us a bit more resistances physical and spell resistance and then only have the hat and infused with a tri stick glyph on. And uh, yeah, that worked out to be the nicest overall, smoothest uh, thing, so to speak. However, if you don't like that, you can use infused big pieces with tri stack glyphs on them. It will give you even more magicka and stamina. Though, um, if you look at this character sheet again, it's not really needed because we already got nine, almost 20k. Uh, just a hundred short of 20k and then over 20k stamina and almost 41k health and then magical recovery of 1700 ish and the resistances are fine like this too so this is just what worked out nicest for me but as you know traits on tank stuff are pretty much personal preference if you don't need the the last sturdy here because it's on all of the small pieces as well the shoulders waist hands and feet you could also go with an other infused say on the on the shield or with a well fitted for example on the shield to uh, reduce the cost of roll dodge a little bit but yeah this is what what I ran best with just have the light head the medium shoulders the five pieces heavy two of them in reinforced one of them in infused with a tri stack glyph on it and yeah that's pretty much what worked out nicest for me <coughs> all right so much for the whole build now, I forgot to go into the passives before, we'll quickly take a look at them because they're quite nice to understand what you're actually doing on a Warden tank. Anytime one of your Animal Compillion skills ends, you are healed for 1,500 health. We always have our Blue Betty up, and that lasts for 25 seconds, so every 25 seconds you get a nice little heal, and then you can recast it. Also, when you cast an Animal uh, Companion's ability, while you're in combat, you generate 4 ultimate, and this can occur every... Uh, eight seconds. So every time you cast your Betty Netch, you generate ultimate, which is also very nice as your tank because that means more warhorns, or more um, forests or barriers. Then we've got here increases your magic and stamina recovery by twelve percent if an animal companion ability is slotted, which is why we have this here on the front bar of the Betty Netch. So it's also very nice for your resource gain for your magic and stamina recovery, and then this increases your damage done. That's not too important for us. Green balance, as we said before, when you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, you gain major mending. So if you were to use one of those, you could make use of that or the forest even because the forest actually uh, is there quite fast. It only costs 90 ultimate. Then you've got nature's gift. When you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 magic or stamina. This also only uh, really makes sense for us if we were to use one of these abilities same with this which increases your healing done for uh, the green balance ability slotted and then this one when you activate a heal on yourself or an ally you grant them minor toughness increasing uh, their max health by 10% for 20% this is the only one that is not actually tied to a green balance ability so this will also count with our polar wind which heals ourselves or an enemy as you can see here as soon as we activate that, our health goes up to over 40k. So it's very important to keep that one up. And then also, in the Winter's Embrace, that's pretty much a tanking skill line, increases the chance of applying Chilled, so this is very nice for tanking, by 200%. Enemies uh, who have recently been Chilled take 10% more critical damage and healing from you. 
we're not doing too much damage, so that's not too important. But the actually the 200% buff to chance of a blank shield is very nice. Increases your physical and spell resistance by 500 for each ability slotted. So this is actually a thousand on our back bar and 500 on our front bar. Reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you. That's very nice, so you don't get snared so much. And then increases your magic and frost damage by 10%. So these passives are actually all very nice for tanking, which makes wardens such nice tanks. Obviously, you want all of the ones in the one hand and shield and destruction stuff skill line because there's our main weapons. You want the first three in the light armor skill line. I've only got five because, as I said, sometimes I turn this into my healer. But the first three actually count for the one piece of light that we're wearing. The other two only count when you got five or more pieces of light armor equipped, so you don't need those. Same with medium. Um, you actually only need Windwalker for your stamina recovery and athletics for your movement speed. And then obviously all of the ones in the heavy armor skill line because we're wearing five pieces of heavy Yonacrins. Fighter's Guild. You only really need this because this will make your silver leash cost 15% less. Undaunted, you want all of those definitely because we are wearing 5 1 1, so 5 heavy, 1 light, 1 medium. And this will give you a 4% bonus to your max health, stamina, and magicka, as well as a 6% bonus to, um, well, your, your uh, max health, magicka, and stamina, plus the, uh, the synergies. Uh, restore gain that you get from activating a synergy will be 4% that way around. Alright, magic aid, you only want that if you actually run barrier, if you run the forest, you don't need that. Obviously you want all of your passives and then the medicinal use passive as well. And to round this up, let's quickly go into the champion points. 72 ironclad, 16 spell shield, 49 in elemental defender and hardy, 51 in thick skinned, 19 in quick recovery and 14 in heavy armor focus just to boost our physical and spell resistances a little bit i've got 37 in warlord and then 18 into bashing focus uh 64 in tenacity and 50 uh 75 in arcanist and then we've got 56 in shadow ward and 20 into tumbling and then we've got uh 75 and 72 in blessed and elfborn just because of the whole build how it's made out to be you really want to give strong heals to your uh to your allies Nothing in here, and then 40 in Thaumaturge, uh 34 in here, and then 49 in here. Doesn't really matter too much with the Piercing and Mighty because we're not running Alkosh. But what we do want to get is 120 points in here because of the last stand. When you fall below 20% health, you gain Major Heroism, granting you three ultimates every 1.5 seconds for 9 seconds, which is a very nice passive for a tank to have. Alright, so this is the healing tank. Uh, you do give all the resistance debuffs with Pierce Armor and with your Crusher Enchant. You boost the allies' resistances with Expansive Frost Cloak. You can uh, have great crowd control uh, control with your Gripping Shards and your uh, Blockade of Frost there, which also gives you the shield against projectiles. And you offer loads of heals to you and your allies. Uh, try it out. I hope you enjoy this build. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it. I'll see you next time.